you can achieve mouse-like precision with motion controls. Ever since the release of Splatoon in 2015 and the Steam Controller, motion controls for aiming, also known as gyroing, started to become much more popular. But it's been more than a decade since the technology is widely available, and most people still don't know how to use it and how it actually works. Nowadays, almost every platform and controller is capable of doing this, and some people got really good at it. Check it out! Now, there are some misconceptions about gyroing, and I will get to those later. But for now, let's just ask, what is gyro? Gyro is the abbreviation of gyroscopes. Gyroscopes are motion sensors present in most modern controllers and mobile devices. It's most often used for aiming, but it can also work as a mouse cursor or a steering wheel. This guide will primarily talk about gyroing. But you may be asking, why would I want to use that? Well, Gyro can vastly improve your gaming experience by being the controller's mouse. Basically, Gyro will follow your physical movements the same way that a mouse would. Yes, Gyro can also emulate an analog stick, but that isn't the ideal scenario. You also may be saying, well, I tried it once and I didn't like it. And to that I said, you know, I'm very sorry to hear that, but just so you know, most implementations of this feature are really, really bad, often emulating an analog stick instead of a mouse, causing huge dead zones. Laggy smoothing and low sensitivities also make things less than excellent. Also, this isn't something that you will get right away. You need to open your mind and spend some time with this control scheme. So what platforms and controllers support gyro? PS4 with the DualShock 4, PS5 with the DualSense, Nintendo Switch with the Joy-Cons and the Switch Pro Controller, Steam Deck with the device itself, and any gyro controller supported by Steam Input, PC with literally any controller with gyro, and mobile and handhelds like tablets, smartphones, and PC handhelds. There are many accessories and third-party controllers with gyro that work on multiple platforms, including ones that don't support gyro natively, like the Xbox. But to make things simple, I will not talk about those in this video. So how is the implementation of Gyro Aim on these platforms? On PS4 and PS5, only a handful of games support this feature. Most of them don't have an acceptable quality, often emulating an analog stick instead of a mouse. On Switch, most games allow for Gyro Aim, but they suffer the same problems as the PlayStation games, low quality implementations. On smartphones and tablets, gyro implementation is usually very good. On PC, it's a bit complicated. Most games that support gyro on PC were ported from the PS5. Because of that, they only work with PS4 or PS5 controllers while using a USB connection. You can emulate a DualShock 4 using the S4 Windows though. But there are games and programs that work with pretty much any controller, like some emulators. You can also force gyro into almost every PC game by using a gyro-compatible controller plus a third-party program like Steam Input, Read WASD, Joyshock Mapper or DS4 Windows. If you want to learn how to do that on Steam Input, this channel is completely dedicated to teaching you how to do that. So please, subscribe, hit the bell and all that stuff. Okay, so how do you activate Gyro? Consoles and smartphones are really simple. You just go to the settings menu of the game and activate Gyro. This option often has different names, like Gyro Aim, Motion Aim or Motion Controls. But no matter the name, they all do the same thing. Some games, while activating gyro, will require you to choose when gyro will be active, like only when you're aiming down sights or on all the time. For beginners, I recommend leaving gyro on only when you press the aim button, but feel free to try both methods. On PC and Steam Deck, if the game doesn't have native implementation, you need to implement gyro yourself by using a third-party program, like Steam Input, Read WASD, DS4 Windows, or Joyshock Mapper. Again, if you want to learn how to do this on Steam Input, this channel is entirely dedicated to that, so subscribe. Okay, so now you know how to activate Gyro, but how do you actually aim with it? Well, there are multiple ways, and these are the most common methods. Gyro plus analog sticks. 
This is the most common way of using gyro. Use the analog sticks to get close to your target and use gyro to do the rest of the track. Gyro plus trackpads are similar to gyro plus analog sticks. Use the trackpads to get close to your target and use the gyro to do the rest of the track. Because of the amount of inputs that you can mine to trackpads, this makes for a super versatile setup. For example, you can use the touch of the trackpad to activate and deactivate gyro, and you can press the trackpad to jump. Gyro Ratchet. Move the controller until you can't move it any further then press a button to disable gyro and reposition the controller. It's similar to lifting a mouse once you reach the edge of your mousepad, but instead of lifting, you will press a button. This method doesn't require a second analog stick. Flick stick allows you to snap the camera to any angle by pointing the right analog stick to the angle that you want. You can also sweep smoothly if you put the analog forward first. You will need to rely on gyro because you won't be able to look up or down without it. Okay, but like, how do you hold and move the controller? This isn't a Wiimote, it's just a gyro sensor. So you don't need to move all of your arm, you just need to move your wrists. So just hold the controller the way that you're already used to for your entire life. It's that simple. Now, there are some important concepts that you need to know about like custom versus native implementation. Native implementation is the feature that is built into the game. You just go to the settings and activate it. Unfortunately, most developers don't know how to implement Gyro correctly. If you are a developer and you want to know how to use Gyro correctly, please read the Gyro wiki created by Jibsmart. He made the Gyro implementation on Fortnite, which is arguably the best implementation ever made. Custom implementations are the configurations made using third-party programs on PC or accessories on console that enable you to use gyro. Often this leads to better feeling results, but it takes more time because you need to set it up yourself. Every good gyro experience has a button to recenter the camera or to temporarily disable gyro. For example, if you are controlling your recoil, to reposition your controller to the center of the screen, you'll be obligated to hold the controller in an uncomfortable position. Because of that, you need a button to disable gyro to be able to reposition the controller after controlling your recoil. While using a mouse, you can just lift the mouse and reposition it. But while using a controller, you need to press a button to do a similar action. The thing is, most games don't have this feature, so be on the lookout if you find a game that does. And if a game really doesn't give you this option, you can always use the right analog stick to reposition your camera. Another important concept is the natural sensitivity scale. What if you could choose a preferred sensitivity across every game? This is the basis of the natural sensitivity scale. When you turn a controller, it's completely possible to line that rotation up one-to-one -one with the in-game controls. But one-to-one -one might not give you enough range, so your preference for that ratio may vary. Beginners may start with one-to-two or one-to-three sensitivity, while more advanced players may use one-to-six or one-to-seven sensitivity allowing them to do 180s by moving only 30 degrees of the controller. To keep fine control even at those high sensitivities, they will use response curves or precision zones to further reduce the rotation of small rotations. This seems very complex at first, and it is, but it's the most advanced concept on this guide. So don't worry if it doesn't click right away, alright? Basically, these modes will tell the controller or the gyro sensor which way is up. But why does this matter? Because people hold controllers in different ways. So if you hold the controller flat on your lap, up is where the face buttons are. But if you hold the controller upwards, then up is where the triggers are. The following examples will be done with the controller flat on my lap. So just rotate my examples to fit your use case. The hand movements are the same, it's just a different axis. Local space is separated in three modes. Yaw mode, Row mode and yaw plus row mode. While using yaw mode to look sideways, you need to turn the controller like a bus steering wheel. With row mode, you can just row the controller. With yaw plus row, you can mix the two modes. 
The drawback is that you will need to change between these modes in the settings menu of the game, if the game allow you to change that at all. Also, looking sideways while tilting the controller up or down may feel a bit awkward. Local space is also the most consistent option for portable devices. Which mode you should use will come down to personal preference. World space automatically determines the upward direction, eliminating the need to manually switch between them in the settings menu. When looking up or down, you can simply roll the controller to look sideways instead of tilting this way if you are using your mode local space. World space won't work correctly with portable devices due to the varying ways that players hold their devices during gameplay. The camera movement may lack consistency exactly because of the calculations done to discover which way is up. Opting for local space ensures a more reliable and consistent behavior during gameplay. Player space is the combination of the best of both worlds. Precise and versatile and easy to pick up. It's usually the optimal choice among the three, especially when using a standalone controller. But it also works well with portables. It will just be less consistent in bed. <laughs> the LDR. Local space is the most consistent option for portable devices. Player space will also work well outside of bed. And any mode will work well with standalone controllers. But player space will be the best for most people and use cases. So I've been talking a lot about good and bad implementation, but what does this actually mean? Well, there are many small quality of life improvements that culminate in a good gyro experience. The essentials are gyro should work like a mouse. It should respond to your fast and precise movements without a huge dead zone, delay or complex filtering. It should always have a button to disable gyro and it should have a sensitivity slider that follows the natural sensitivity scale. As a bonus, it would also be really good if we have the option to hold the controller in multiple ways, like choosing between player, world and local space, to choose when gyro will be active, and access to separate sensitivity sliders for horizontal, vertical and analog sensitivities. There are a handful of games that got most of this right, like Fortnite, COD Modern Warfare 2 and 3, God of War Ragnarok, Neon White on Switch and PS5, Splatoon, Metroid Prime Remaster, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom, Boomerang X, Deathloop, No Man's Sky, and The Last of Us Part 2. There are multiple games that I heard that got it right, but I couldn't get my hands on it to test it. I pretend to update this guide in the future with a list of every game that supports Jaro, so please just read the description. <laughs> in conclusion, that's it! Those are all the essentials that you need to know to take your first steps with Jaro. Beyond the important concepts, most things are quite intuitive. You can grasp them shortly after picking up the controller and giving it a try. So go ahead! Give it a try! Shout out to Orbre Hasselgreen, Jib Smart, and all for helping me write this guide, and BJ Gobeldix for sending me some clips. There is also a text version of this guide on Reddit that I can easily update, so please check that out too. This was super hard to make, so please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.